Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, I bring you guys my top five gimmicky ships list. So, these are five of some of the most gimmicky ships I could think of in the game. Now, what is a gimmick? A gimmick, in my mind, is something like a consumable that is way above the norm for this game, or some type of combination of characteristics that, again, are far outside what is the norm for ships in this game. This game is, of course, very arcadey. It's not like War Thunder, where it's more of a simulator. So, we do have, you know, a couple of, you know, arcadey elements here and there, but these ships push well beyond that. Also, if you guys are interested in some more real, tangible history, uh, yesterday I uploaded a video talking about a P08 Luger I'd picked up. If you're interested in military surplus firearms or just cool historical firearms, please check out that video. These videos kind of get buried by YouTube. Again, I'm just trying to see what else can work on the channel, trying to branch out a little bit. Alright, on to the list. Again, keep in mind, this is all 125% of my opinion. There's plenty of gimmicky ships in the game, so these are just five that I selected because they kind of stand out to me. Alright, beginning at number five, we have everyone's favorite tier 10 British battleship. Well, there's actually several to choose from nowadays. That is the Conqueror, the tech line at tier 10 British battleship. So there are, there are two main gimmicks of the Conqueror that definitely stand out above everybody else. The first one is not only unique to the Conqueror, but the entire British battleship line, which is their amazing British BBHE. The HE on these ships is insane. It has great alpha, amazing fire chance. It's usually coupled with pretty darn good reload times for their tier. The HE also, I don't know if it's it's maybe just the explosion radius or if they coded it different, but it just seems to have this absolutely insane ripping ability where it would absolutely shred through your ship's AA and secondaries. It's great if you want to remove something's AA so your CV can just murder it. <laughs> the second thing about the Conqueror that's more unique to the Conqueror is her super heal. The Conqueror can literally print back about two thirds of its HP it really doesn't care about damage unless it's just absolutely catac cataclysmic damage like you're selling broadside to a yammy and it like quad sits you that's the only time a conqueror would really care about the damage that it eats other damage just normal pin damage and fire damage and flooding damage a conqueror does not give two craps about that so those two traits right there make it an incredibly annoying ship to deal with Especially when the ship was first released, the ship was beyond busted. Her citadel was below the waterline. Her heel is, well, the heel that we have today, and the cooldown that we have today, too. The, the, the heel cools down in 60 seconds. But imagine this thing not having a citadel. So back when this thing was first released, man, this thing was absolutely just pain to deal with back in the day. But today her citadel has been raised, so it's kind of more balanced today as well. They also nerfed her detection back when she was first released. 11.3 kilometers was her max uh, detect, which was insane for a battleship to have that. So if you need a ship that just needs, that just needs to go to a flank and just survive, Conqueror is definitely it, because unless you can dev strike the thing, it's going to be sticking around for a while. It's also a fantastic ship if you're like me and you love to ride Adrenaline Rush, because again, with the reload speed of the Conqueror, with the module, that's 26 seconds, and then once you start eating damage, because the ship is coated in 32 millimeters of armor, it will eat plenty of damage, but again, the heal make, means you don't care about that. So you can ride Adrenaline Rush just so comfortably in the ship. Because you know that, hey, if I'm about to die, I hit T, and I get three quarters of my ship back. Very fast. It's not like it takes seven years to print back the new ship, too. No, it, it only takes a few seconds. <laughs> so, yes, an amazingly gimmicky ship, and one that's a great con contester, a great all-flank kiter. A ship that we're probably going to see a lot of in the upcoming seasonal clan battles as well. And one that does make its appearance a fair amount of times in more competitive things like COTS and other tournaments as well. Alright, going on down to number 4, we have my personal favorite tier 9 Italian DD, the Paolo Emilio, or better known as the Yolo Emilio. This ship literally has one purpose in this game, and it is to be a torpedo delivery system from point blank range. Everything about this ship is designed to torp rush, and she does it very, very, very well. So the ship has a exhaust smoke, 
exhaust mode is different from the normal smoke screens or the crawling smoke screens that you see on other DDs and cruises and such because it keeps up with your ship. It's the Italian lines thing. So you can be rocking and rolling at 60 knots, which the Apollo can get up to with the proper build, and be completely undetected from your smoke. Second off, it has torpedoes that have Shimakaze levels of alpha, yet only a 6 kilometer range, which, again, means you're supposed to kind of deliver these fairly close. And then thirdly, it's got an engine boost that lasts just the correct amount of time to cover the distance from your max detectability to the target. Like, it lasts just enough time for you to get 7.1 kilometers to your intended recipient of your torpedoes. Very, very intentional in my mind. So that means that you have a ship here that is purpose-built for torp rushing. And it's very good at it. Is it easy to pull off? No, it's really not. Um, it's a ship that I've showcased quite a lot of this channel, and um, I always get a lot of comments saying how easy it is to pull off. It's, it's really not. If there's other DDs around, the thing's not a great gunboat unless you have very good aim. Again, your torpedoes are only 6 kilometers. It's a massive target, too. Very easy for other DDs to uh, deal with. But if you can find a lone target or two, a lone cruiser, a lone battleship, something like that, you're just going to absolutely have a fantastic time. It's hilarious when you pull it off, and it's always get some pretty interesting reactions in chat. This is a research bureau ship though, so it is quite costly in time and or money to get, but a ship that I do enjoy playing and I've gotten quite a few laughs out of. It's pretty much only useful in random battles, I, and it's not even really that useful because if you take too much time trying to go snipe somebody, you know, you are a DD and you have other DD things that you need to do, but yeah, it's funny. Is it useful and competitive? Absolutely not, but one hell of a gimmicky ship with one mission, and that is to YOLO. Alright, going on down to number three, we have the Tier 9 American Destroyer the Black, a destroyer with smoke and radar. Yeah, this ship is great at cap contesting, obviously with that combo. It's great to smoke up, pop radar, and catch pretty much all the other DDs in the in the cap with their pants down. It's a very useful gimmick, especially in randoms. Um, it's one that I do enjoy. It's quite funny watching the ships that are used to sitting in smoke be surprised when there's a DD with radar near them that isn't a small one. And when this ship was released, it came out not that long after the four Shermans. The amount of four Shermans I caught just sitting in their smoke that couldn't understand that they were being radared when they thought a radar ship wasn't near them. <laughs> yeah, the, this ship was originally released way back in the day. They pulled her, they nerfed her a bit, which honestly she did need, and then they re released her for coal. She is, I believe, the most expensive tier 9 coal ship in the game at the moment, but well worth it in my opinion. Uh, her gimmick has managed to stand up to the test of time. Which is saying a lot because a lot of times when ships are released with certain gimmicks, they are great for, you know, maybe eight months, nine months, a year, but then eventually they get out gimmicks. While even older lines that were built around, you know, more unique characteristics and stuff and not just having a, a really gimmicky consumable still stand up to the test of time. But the black is one that has managed to endure for quite some time now and one that I'm sure will be around for quite some time and still be useful but yes a, a DD that I enjoy and one that has one hell of a gimmick and one hell of a useful gimmick at that all right going on the way down to number the second number two that is the, the Giuseppe 30 the tier 9 Italian battleship that isn't the Marco Polo or the Lepanto so the Giuseppe Verdi answered the cry of the players to give us an Italian battleship with SAP secondaries. Now the secondaries on the Italian battleships are mostly 90mm guns, which don't even pin higher tier destroyer armor. However, once you throw SAP in there, they're much more useful. They get the pin up to a usable pin, which I believe is uh, 20, 25 millimeters of pin which is a hell of a lot more useful than 19 or 17. So you have these SAP secondaries that can actually pin stuff now. And you do have a lot of them. I mean, if you look up and down the side of the Italian battleships, they have a hell of a lot 
of these secondaries. Yeah, it gets the pin up to 26 millimeters. Just checking in my port real quick. So 26 millimeters of pin at tier 9. While not amazing, it's that 32 millimeters of armor. Again, the sheer amount that you will be throwing at the target. You're going to be hitting their superstructure, and when it comes to cruisers, that's a different story. You know, we have a lot of cruisers that don't have, you know, 27 millimeters and above armor all over them at tier 9. So it's a lot more usable. The secondaries are coupled with the exhaust smoke. So, what you do have here is a battleship that can smoke up, fire secondaries without being detected because when your secondaries don't go, uh, go off, your bloom doesn't expand. And it does have a catapult plane, so you can launch your catapult plane, be in smoke, have the plane spotting for you, and let your secondaries rip without you ever being spotted. And you will be surprised the amount of players that ignore the giant battleship sized smoke screen heading toward them at 32 knots. They either ignore it or they don't notice it. You will be surprised how many times this has worked out really well for me. Now, one big downside for the secondaries is that the maximum range is 10.5 kilometers, and that's kind of, ah, uh, yeah, 10.5 kilometer secondaries is bad by even like tier 8 standards, let alone tier 9 or tier 10. But granted, with a smoke screen, you could, in the past, pretty easily get within that range with the smoke and just let your secondaries go to town, and it would work out pretty decently well. But like I said, in the black section, gimmicks kind of get out of meta pretty fast, and that is, yeah, definitely what happened here with the Giuseppe Verdi. You don't really have too many situations where, at least in early to mid game, definitely not early game at higher tier, where you can do this and do this well. Now, later game, sure, if the game lasts long enough, you can probably get this going pretty well, but, I mean, again, how many times do higher tier matches evolve to that point and still keep going? So, yeah, not to mention, too, the ship itself, they didn't really give it much better accuracy. She does, she, does, she does have better reload than her sister, the Marco Polo, but she also doesn't have the sap shell. She has AP and HG in her main battery guns. So that's also kind of uh, Italian dispersion, like we've talked about plenty of times on this channel, is pretty rough, and you don't have sap to fall back on with the Giuseppe Verdi here. But yes, a very gimmicky ship, one that answered the request of many of players, and definitely is a testament to how fast gimmicks kind of just get thrown out the window here in this game. And finally, number one, the tier 10 Soviet cruiser. The Sevastopol, probably one of the most gimmicky ships we have ever gotten in this game. And the downside to the Sevastopol is that none of its gimmicks are very, well, good. So the Sevastopol is one of the designs for the Kronstadt. Now the Kronstadt we got in game is what the Soviets decided to go with. This was a version where they were supposed to purchase some 15 inch guns from the Germans, but that friendship quickly fell apart. So this version was never given the go ahead. Now in game, what they did here with the Sevastopol is they took the Kronstadt hull, which is not a good large cruiser hull anymore. It was good when it was the only one in the game along with the, along with the Stalingrad, but since then we've gotten better hulls like the gear, the Alaska, so forth and so on. They removed 10,000 HP from the hull, which is one of the things that gave the hull its survivability, was having 70-something thousand HP at tier 9. But they removed that, push it up to tier 10, bolt some 15-inch guns on it, and give it, like, the most gimmicky set of consumables I've seen in this game. You have an engine boost that only lasts for 48 seconds, so it's not quite usable. You have a heal that takes an eternity to do anything, and then takes three minutes to cool down, and then you have fast damage con. So, the heal is my main gripe with this ship, because it's so just useless in a lot of situations. Now, some have said, oh, well, since it is a super heal, which it is, it is, it is a super heal, you can reprint back, again, just like the Conqueror, like two-thirds of your ship, but it takes an attorney to do it. So in situations like the first match that should be playing right now, when, let's say, you're trying to go to a flank, because this ship is designed to flank, you know, it's got accurate 15-inch guns, has a speed boost, and it does have, a again, a super heal to where you can, you know, kite if you need to. So I go to this flank, and boom, there's a Schlieffen that also rushed down the, this flank. So I turn around, and I pop my heel, so I, I've, ha I've got, like, I believe, three ships shooting at me, 
I pop my heal, and even with the super heal going, it takes so long to do what it needs to do, I still just get melted. Now, yes, the heal did manage to extend my life by a little bit, but if you look at the amount of HP it's replenishing, it, it, it's, it's, it's so minimal that it's just almost useless. Now, if you had something like a Conqueror heal, well, I could have completely reprinted back my ship's HP. I probably would have lasted for a little while longer, but again, you know, I do have three ships shooting at me here. But it, this just demonstrates, it's a very good demonstration of how little the heal actually repairs in its per second tick. Now, again, the situation could have been remedied if the speed boost had actually lasted for longer than 48 seconds. Like, I don't know, maybe a minute and a half or two minutes, like most speed boosts actually do last for. So, you have a ship with these gimmicks that it had to give up so much of its survivability for. Because, again, they removed 10,000 HP from it. They gave it one of the worst large cruiser hulls in the game. It didn't even, like, improve the armor at all and bolted all these gimmicky consumables onto it and released it. And this ship went through dev hell too. This heal was originally like eight charges of a small heal that cooled down very fast, but then they got to a few charges of a super heal that cooled down in three minutes. And keep in mind too, three minutes. How many games do we have that end in like six or seven minutes? To where if you somehow popped your heal when you just took a little bit of damage, you still would only be able to use like two charges of it. And keep in mind too, since it, since it is a super heal, and it does take so long to do its thing, it takes so long to recharge, you have to essentially wait till you're almost dead to, to use it. Since, again, it's like the Conqueror to where, yeah, sure, I'm only at half health, but I just need some more health in my current situation, but I know that my heal is going to be off cooldown in 60 seconds, so I can go ahead and pop it and, you know, I'll be fine. You can't do that here in the Sevastopol. So yeah, this is kind of, for me, the, the pinnacle of gimmickiness in World of Warships, and it's definitely it at its worst, in my opinion. So guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 50,000 subs, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. We're getting very close to that goal, which is amazing. Hope you guys have a great Monday and a great rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.